Hey there, flesh and blood folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and Go Again, a fabulous cast. Today we're here with Aaron. How are you doing, my friend? Not bad. I'm doing really well. Thank you very much. Yeah, so he took down with Emperor, got himself some LL points, or on the LL board with Emperor yes. at Sword and Board a couple weeks ago. So today we're going to be sitting with him and talking Emperor and kind of everything going on in Skirmish Season. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, folks. Welcome back. Thanks for checking in today. And Aaron, how are we doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, had fun yesterday. Did a skirmish yesterday. Came in ninth. Uh, not as well as I thought, but, you know, it's skirmish. Right. Uh, sort of sideboard's the thing. Right. So yeah, I want to talk to you a bit about that as well, but when we get started, can you just bring everybody up to speed with who you are, kind of your quick history with Flesh and Blood? Well, my name's Aaron. I started playing Flesh and Blood about Uprising. Um, wasn't very good at all. <laughs> Takes a lot of losses to learn how to play this game. Uh, I was just looking for something other than magic, mm -hmm. and this really appealed to me, and I just kept going from there, and getting better and learning different heroes. I think I started on, on uh, Boost Dash. Uh, I liked the hero, uh, but it really wasn't calling to me, so mm -hmm. I kind of moved on. Uh, first legendary equipment I pulled was a Cornet Peak, so I said, well, I'll build Iceland. Mm -hmm. So I did that, uh, ran it for a long time without Storm Striders. Uh, it's much better with Storm Striders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I've played, I tried Phi. I, ninjas don't call to me, so I, I'm working on putting a, uh, a... And then the next big one I tried was Kasai. Mm -hmm. I love Kasai. Kasai is like one of my favorites to play in Blitz. Uh, and then I I was talking to... Uh, the, the Emperor came out, Billy, uh, who uh, I play against all the time, kind of worked with me on a list. I worked on his list. Well, he had his list, and I took that. And I haven't really modified it too much, uh, except for when we did the skirmish season, bringing the extra cards. I've I've enjoyed playing it. It's 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 different. But right now I'm working on like building out like a Bravo or a, a Dory. That's for for yeah. CC. For CC, yeah. 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 I I, had, I can play CC with uh, Kano, but it gives me a headache and. <laughs> I have a Icelander list for CC also, but I would like to have some options, some, something else. And I enjoyed Bravo the one time I got to play it in CC. Somebody brought me a deck, so. All right, well, let's talk the, the skirmish that you brought. So I, I want to do a couple different things. I want to talk the skirmish that you brought down, kind of walk us through the history on that. We'll obviously go through the list for the folks. And then, as you mentioned, we had a skirmish yesterday here at Gongai and you got ninth bubbled out on that. So I want to hear what was different between the two and um, kind of go from there. So that's to start, you said you liked Kasai. Kasai is obviously a very strong hero in Skirmish right now. So why did you decide to skew from that and go Emperor? I just like the way the Emperor plays because it makes people have to choose suboptimal equipment choices. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, I, I was gonna play Kasai and then at the last minute it changed. I just said, well, I've been playing Emperor a lot and I enjoy it, so I'm gonna try it and see how it, how it goes. Win, lose, draw. Mm -hmm. Di I didn't didn't care. I just I enjoy playing it, so I said I'll give it a shot, see how see how it does. And it did well the first one. It did well the second one too. It just not as well as the sure. first one. Sure. Sure. All right. So you're obviously playing. What we'll go ahead and go through the list on the screen right now in editing. Uh, but you are playing the Waning Moon version, which I think collectively, at least in our play area, we believe to be the better option. Correct, correct. Uh, Crucible takes too many resources. Uh, Spellblade would only be good in a wizard uh, mirror, but I've never used it. I, and that, that is not in your, it's not even in your sideboard, right? Uh, no, because yeah. I've never I've never needed it, so I just completely eliminated it to be able to put extra cards in my sideboard. Sure. Yeah, now, now with the sideboarding rule, every card, every card absolutely matters, right? Correct. So, all right, good. Uh, so we have, uh, all reds, by the way, shocker yes. there, right? Yeah. We have either dart, either quickening, blaze headlong, brush off. I do want to ask you about that card. Command and conquer, emeritus scolding, enlightened strike, fate foreseen, 
Uh, you're running the new card Meeps from Meeps. Um, Mischievous Meeps from the new set. And then you said uh, yesterday you swapped it out for Free Willing Renegades. For uh, the, uh, in case there was a prism. Yes. In case of prism, right, because yeah. it's a 1-6. Give and take, obviously, Life for Life, Oasis, Ravenous Rabble, one Reverberate, two Saps, two Scalding Rains, two Scars, two Sigils, two Sinks, two Snatches, two sh Red Shunts, obviously, two Swell Tidings, and uh, two Zaps. And that fills out your, with Flamescale Furnace and your, uh, your loadout, that fills out your, uh, your, your suite. So with the, um, are you typically sitting down with 40 cards? Is that typically the plan? Or have you sat down with more? I have, for the first match at, at Sword and Board, I sat down with 42. Okay. I had the Meeps in there. I've, I meant to take out something and I, I just didn't. I said, well, I'll just try it and see, see how it went. I think I'd go back to just 40, flat 40. Mm -hmm. I think 42, you're messing your curve up a little bit. You really have to watch. I've seen other lists. I know they're good, but the curve resource with only reds is tough. Mm -hmm. So you got to really have a really good balance of ones and zeros, lots of, as many zeros as you possibly can. There's some things you can do with a one, and then you know pitch the flame skill. But it's still a lot yeah, of cards. It's still a lot of cards, right. right? Yeah, you have to be able to. I mean, everything in there blocks for three, pretty much. There's a few that don't, you know, like uh, snatch, scar for scar. But mm -hmm. you're normally playing those, so you're not really worried about blocking with those. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk the uh, the end game move, right? Which is basically pop striders Emer. I mean, that's the dream, right? Pop striders emeritus, and then moon. Correct. When do you when do you decide to go? Depends on how much AB they have. Uh, so if you hit normally if they hit nine and they empty their hand that's all go then mm -hmm. if they have nothing else then I'm just praying they don't have a, a instant uh, what is it sigil sigil of solace yeah the, yeah. the plus, plus, three life. Plus, yeah. plus three life if I haven't seen them play one then I'm and you know you kind of know other people's lists kind of what they play what they don't play then you're just hoping that they don't have it. If they have it, then you you end up losing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, nine. Uh, the more AB, the lower I have to get up, the mm -hmm. lower to make sure that they uh, have they can't get out of it. Right. Understood. All right. So let's let's talk matchups. Your uh, sword and board. Your round one. What what did you run up against? Kasai. Kasai. And I know how Kasai wants to play because I play a lot of Kasai. So I kind of knew what they wanted to do. Uh, he brought a b three mm. and the courage of play hold and then he played uh i can't remember the name of it the card that it's a just a card you put on the board gives you a b one i can't remember the name of that thing oh interesting uh it's just a permanent so he had a b four in that he match. ended up in yeah he pulled it first turn so he ended up having a b four so i went pretty much all block with my my arcane which is all block threes, and then I just threw attacks at him. Mm -hmm. And without the, without having the extra block from the, from the uh, uh, legs, the Valiant Dynamos, right. uh, he had to bleed life or give me two cards. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times he was bleeding a point here, a point there. Interesting. And then he emptied his hand, so right. at the end. Okay. And then, Matt, what did you run up against in your second match? Second match was a Dory, who didn't bring any AB. So yeah. that one, that uh, I kind of felt bad for him. Um, he thought back and he's going, "I should have brought some AB." Yeah. I said, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that that one's pretty self-explanatory then. Yeah, there was no AB, so I just would throw an attack, and then after the attack, I'd throw an AB at right. him, uh, arcade, and he'd just have to right. eat it. So once he got down to that that pivotal point there was nothing you could do all i had to do was go off all i had to do was have my america because right, if you if you get him to nine he's yeah he's, there's no, he's, you only have to you only have to chip away four times to get him there right yeah so yeah. it doesn't it didn't yeah it wasn't you got to bring some ab against emperor uh, yep yep all right match three match three was against uh prism that's why i brought the extra got it and i i hadn't played against a prism before like that because it's the newer one with the with the old Luminaris. Oh, so it was, it was Advent. Right, it was Advent. It. So it was Advent of Thrones. He had the old Luminaris. He was running 
the merciful, merciful retribution aura. Mm -hmm. And then I know he had arc light sentinels. I saw him pitch those. Um, what else did he run? He was running the, a lot of the figments and, of course, all the heralds. So sure. I just didn't have enough poppers, I mm -hmm. think, is what the problem was. So you, did you lose that match? I lost that match. I got it. I got it. Yeah, but I had beat the guy that he lost to. So that's why I ended up winning. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so then, yeah, like you mentioned, tomorrow or yesterday, excuse me, didn't go quite as well as the sword and board one did. Um, you did get ninth, to be clear, in a yeah. pretty competitive meta, so not right. nothing too shabby. No. Um, and then the freewheeling renegade you had packed, but we saw a grand total of zero, zero prisms. prisms so <laughs> it was just it was a just in case because I don't think I needed the meeps. I think I like the meeps, but I'm not I'm not quite sold mm -hmm. on them yet. So because the force is a block, the meeps if you don't know what they do they 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 cost one, but they attack for two, so it's easy to block. But if you don't block them, I get to draw a card. Or if you have an item, I get to take your item. So uh, cost two or less. So like your your energy potion or potion of deja vu or you know stuff like that from mm -hmm. uh, Kano or even uh, Dash's Techno Pounder or right. something like that. And uh, copper, right? Don't copper. can't you steal copper? I guess you could. I never thought about that. Because that Mischievous Meeps doesn't read that you... Because I've done item. that before. Because it's an item, or if they don't have an item, then you draw, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, because I, I, I've done that before where I've sacked a copper. Hopefully, hopefully that's the right play if I'm reading the card correctly. So, All right. Fair enough. But yes, so you didn't run that yesterday. And then one card I wanted to ask you about in your list is Brush Off. So I've seen that's become pretty popular with Red Brush Off, of course, will... Block three if it's three or less, or Correct. prevent three, excuse me, if it's three or less. Correct. So, how has that been playing out? When do you use it? It's that extra, say they pump a card, you, if you know they're going to, you know, kind of like what their attack reactions are, especially against like Kasai, they have a lot of pump threes and stuff. So, I'll block up two, hoping to get them to commit another card, and then I can just brush off that extra mm -hmm. mount. Uh, against like Kano's, a lot of three attacks spells come in. Mm -hmm. I only have to AB two and then brush off the other one, or AB one. Or if they have a three, I just brush off the three and it's right. it's done. So uh, the great thing about brush off is if they happen to go over it, it goes and they attack again. It goes to it'll it'll float until the next attack. So I have another chance to use it. Got it. All right. So you brought up Kano, and that's. An interesting, right, being all red, I mean, the, the math is there. So how do you handle, do you just lose? How do you handle the Kano match? Luck. <laughs> yeah. Kano's luck. If you if you get behind, I've played a couple, three matches against Kano. I've won a couple. Uh, I had a lot of attack to start with and not much uh, arcane. I got lucky. I got some really good pulls. Uh and then I rematched. Uh, the last time I played, I played the guy, I beat him, and then we rematched. And I was dead by turn two. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Kano's probably the worst matchup for right. for Emperor, just because of all the reds. You just you can't afford to pitch that much. Mm -hmm. You bring a different loadout. I mean, for Kano, I'd bring uh, the node and the Spellflay Tiara because mm -hmm. it kind of it'll give them. The TR kind of slows down their kill turn, and it doesn't cost you anything. So, yeah. got it. You're trying to do stuff that doesn't cost you anything. Now I've played it with uh, Constellus, but Flame Skill is just so valuable in being able to pitch to get resources that it's it's not as good mm -hmm. to play Constellus. So that's why it's not even in my list for this. this well, one. and your. Because Emeritus is two and Waning Moon still, so I guess you could do it with a full hand. But being right. able to flame scale after Emeritus and then flame scale right is right really valuable. Yeah, it's pitch to Striders, play two for Emeritus, pitch to Moon, and I mean there's all kinds of tricks. Like if they've got Skull Cap and you don't want them to activate it, you could hold priority on your Emeritus. Pitch to your moon, have your moon come in first for three, and if it doesn't bring them below, they can't A B with their skull cap, mm -hmm. and they automatically take the six. So they can't just take two and then, oh, here now I can take the other three. Got it. So there's little things. Yeah, I mean you can always hold priority on stuff. Uh, 
I need to learn to do that a little bit better because I tend to not do that. But yeah, it's little things you learn over time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. That's what I try to do is just learn as I go. I don't get a lot of time to play other than the uh, armories. So, and I don't play that many armories. I play one a week yeah. generally. So, but those I, of us with jobs, that's the way it works, right? <laughs> yeah, I try to get to this one every other every other week. Uh, just the job I have is nights, and so that's yeah. that's what it is. All right. Well, as we wrap this up, uh, there's I, I do believe Emperor is going to be continuing to pick up steam uh, going forward. So for those who are watching who want to play Emperor, what's your kind of quick and dirty advice to them on that? Quick and dirty advice. Um, you need the equipment. The equipment, you can't play it without it. You've got to have your furnace. You've got to have your striders. Uh, not a cheap deck, but you're saying. It's not, it's not yeah. a cheap deck. Yeah. Uh, do you need the command and conquerors? You don't need them. I don't use the ability all that often, uh, but it's nice to have them. The rest of the deck's cheap. Besides those, oh well, and the e-strikes. You kind of need the e-strikes. Mm. Uh, you can play it without them, but they do make the deck better. But you have to have the furnace and the striders. You just can't play without them. Right. You can. I mean, that's your win con, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. You need the furnace and the striders. It's just it's just not playable without without the the furnace because it just so much resource generation off that. You can do so much stuff with that. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as other equipment that I would bring. I like the Brave Force Bracers, but I think you could find something else to replace it temporarily. Skullcap could be another headpiece. It could be uh, Crown of Providence. I haven't tried that yet. Well, Skullcap's cheaper, right? Skullcap's cheaper. I believe. But, but Crown of Providence, the new one, if you're not really looking for fancy, is come down quite a bit in price gotcha. the, the reprint so uh i normally run skull cap just because it's a two, block two and then a block one mm -hmm. uh and i normally use it pretty quickly so yeah because i don't want them to get the less life and then lose out on the the block on the especially the block two the first part of it yeah awesome all right well thank so again congrats on getting the uh thank ll you. point that's pretty cool thank you, you. have your when when he uh, ll's in forever because we're only earning one point at a time now <laughs> yeah. 500 is a long ways to go that is a long ways to go uh, but when he LLs, you'll have your name on the thing so that's that's pretty cool that's pretty awesome so all right anything any other shout outs you want to give before we get out of here general shout out to the community that's been great i've gotten so many cards from people trying to help me build decks uh i've given out a lot of cards to people that have just started so i mean i'm not giving I try to give out, uh, try to get them to be interested in something they want to play. And so, you know, I try to give them advice, especially new people. Try to give them, like, ideas on, you know, well, what do you like? Mm -hmm. Do you like this? Do you like that? Uh, and then I, we got a guy that uh, he, builds, he builds decks. He builds uh, just some blitz decks. They're not the best blitz decks, but they are good blitz decks. Mm -hmm. they're, they're competent, and you can play them. And we try to give those out to people, new people, so they actually have a uh, not just a starter deck. They have actually have a blitz deck to to work from that they just get to keep because of the cards. I mean, we've given him a lot of cards. Yeah. So um, he works at a store, uh, and he's very passionate about the game, but he never gets to play. So, which kind of sad for him. That's how it goes sometimes, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. And, yeah uh, thank you. Look Thank the you. camera and say it with me. Go, Go Commando. Commando. Hey, nice time. <laughs> <laughs>